All right, so we spent a lot of time really going over if statements in the last micro lecture. This is the micro lecture for module two of programming with C. I am your professor, Professor Fiske, and if you like any of these videos, please like and subscribe so I understand and know what content you're interested in and if this is still relevant to you. All right, great, let's jump in. So up until this point, we've only spoken about decision structures and the decision structure we've spoken about is if statements. If, else if, else. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take a couple of minutes to convert this to the next decision structure you can use. And the next decision structure you're allowed to use in C are switch statements. So what are switch statements? How do they work? What, 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 are, what, is, what is the thing that they do? Well, with an if statement, notice when we debugged that the code went statement by statement to determine which one was true. And if all of these were in the same statement branch, it didn't run the next one. Okay, well, switch is a little different because switch already knows what's true and what isn't true. And you're gonna see that right now. So with a switch statement, all right, we start off and we're gonna convert this if, so please bear with me. The switch is, I wonder if I can use a switch for this specifically because I wanna do, I wanna do an expression but doing expressions in switches is kind of taboo. Kind of taboo. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. So we'll do something else. So switch, and we'll say, uh, the thing we're switching on is the first number. And now we need to write our case statements to find out how this switch actually works. So uh, case, zero and just like the if statement i can take this code right here and i can say well that's what i want to happen when case when the number zero is in first number and it's very important that if i want to write more switches i need to break if i don't break it's just going to fall straight through if i wanted to write multiple cases let's say there was a this was a multi-step case i can do it like this so if zero or one was in first number it would then print that and notice there's no break between zero and one so both of these exist in the same Boolean expression, the same way we did this, but it's and and not or. Great. So I'm gonna erase one because that's not true in this case. I'm gonna put a default in here. And the default is if anything else comes in, that's what that means, anything else, or the else that I told you I'm not a fan of, then I want you to do that. You don't have to break the default because the default's normally the last thing that fires. Uh, if the case is zero, this is a, you enter the letter, don't be, don't be bad. And then if the number is anything else, then I want you to do this. So now I'm going to comment all this out for now. Can I, is there a comment out? There'd be nice if there was a comment button like it is in Visual Studio. <coughs> it's a modify. No, 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 I don't want that. Uh, okay, so if you want to do multi, multi, um, oh, I guess that's not how that works, eh? That's annoying. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just delete this out. I don't feel like uh, trying to figure out if there's multi-line. And now let's run this, all right? Run. Now, if I put in the number zero, or if I, oh, no, 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 no. If I put in D, like I did last time, Please enter only numbers and try again, but I wanna show you how this works. So if I run this, I don't have a breakpoint, do I? So enter number between one and 10. The only reason why this breakpoint will work is because uh, I think it didn't hit this line yet. So we're gonna put in D again, and there it is, it stopped. First number is zero because it couldn't convert, or it couldn't cast the letter D as an integer. So it decided, yeah, you, you're not allowed to do that, bud. So it didn't even try to do it. So what's gonna happen? Well, the case, the answer is gonna be zero, right? That's what the value of this is gonna be. And by default, we're gonna get this right here. So let's go ahead and step in. Next step. And automatically, it didn't even look at the case. It just said, oh yeah, that's right. Here we go, boom. Please enter only numbers and try again. Okay, great. So we're gonna do this and we're going to do that and everything worked just fine. Now what happens when we actually put in a number? And I'm only doing this without the other cases because I wanna show you that it doesn't go sequentially like if statements do, it goes directly to the case, which is true. So if I go back in here and I run this, 
Here we go. Please enter a number between one and 10. It doesn't really matter because any number is gonna work. There it goes, the number is one. You can see it there, right? First number one. All right, great, so let's step in. And look at what happened. It didn't even look at the K0 and say, are you true? It went straight to the default because it said, well, K0 is not true. So I'm going straight to default and it's gonna print this and all is well in the world. And we've made it to the end of the road when it comes to switches. This is a very simple thing to do. In higher languages, you can write Boolean expressions in there in a roundabout way, but old school wise, you were never allowed to do that in the past. Either way, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And as I say in all my videos, I'm having a blast. Good luck. Have fun.